Katz. Comic and DJ, Phil Jupiter. Aussie Rules, Jermaine Greer. And their captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, funny girl, Fiona Allen. Angel of the North, Jason Manford. And their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, here's your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, the average person thinks that 49 is the age when we stop being young? Leah from Big Brother has a lot to pack into the next six months. <laughs> Unattractive people earn 13% less than beautiful people, and that's based on a survey of supermodels and dinner ladies. <laughs> and 95% of creatures on Earth are smaller than a chicken's egg, so when I think about it, I've actually got quite a big cock. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave's team, what have they been talking about? Rather predictable, I'm going to go for the <laughs> World Cup again. Um, we're in the quarterfinals. <laughs> beat Ecuador 1-0. I had a bet, won a few quid. I bet it was going to be shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, Beckham scored the only goal, 1-1-0. So well done and all that. Uh, then was sick. <laughs> Threw up. And I'm wondering whether it was just like he's run out of celebrations. Footballers have invent celebrations all the time. <laughs> so he'd done the baby thing. I've done that one. I've done the kissing the shirt and all that. I've done all that. I know what. Oh, fuck it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> shit. If they'd have panned away to the corner flag, Wayne Rooney's having a dump. That's <laughs> worse. My favourite aspect of the World Cup has been the recurrent appearance of uh, Frank Lampard's disappointed face. Because <laughs> he keeps putting the ball wide and then he goes... <laughs> <laughs> Jason, any thoughts on the World Cup? I just think they've got all a bit soft, to be honest, all these footballers. So many fouls and free kicks and all the time just all diving all over my ankle. I've done... There was a bloke the other day for Ghana who was out because of a, a dead leg. Now, that's not an injury, is it, a dead leg? That's, that's a minor annoyance. When I was ten, I had three dead legs in one day. I still had to do PE and walk home. Watson <laughs> came up trumps again, though. I know I do it every week, but another... Ecuador brought a substitute on. He's got his list of facts, and he? he goes, oh, here we go. oh, he's bringing on Rodriguez. Oh, uh, interestingly enough, this is the smallest man in the world. <laughs> Cop. <laughs> there did a bit of trouble as well, wasn't there? Some England fans kicked off. There was finally there was some trouble. Everyone was saying the England fans behaving very well, and there was a bit of trouble. I, you know, I saw it coming because uh, before the World Cup, I saw near me uh, there was a driving range adapted for chairs. They were practicing <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just warming up for the World Cup. <laughs> if they had a World Cup in Sweden, there'd be no end of a vast variety of furniture to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are we throwing? Huga. All right, okay. <laughs> That's an integrated shelving system. <laughs> <laughs> but I was surprised about the wags, actually, and all the footage on them, and I think, is it that England are playing so shit that they have to do, keep doing cutaways of posh in the crowd? <laughs> She's got a mate, hasn't she, because they've all fallen out. Cheryl Tweedy. And apparently they're in their own little gang, just two of them, Billy No Mates. <laughs> because they reckon that all the other girlfriends and wives don't understand the pressures they're under. And I was just thinking, well, what pressures? What, she was in a shit band, she is in a shit band, and the core audience are age six. What's pressured? <laughs> <laughs> And they jumped up at the goal, didn't they? Went, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening? No idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, you know, it's posh when the little boys they go, yeah, don't get that ice cream near me. Hey! <laughs> Jermaine, any thoughts on the football? You've been following it? I should confess that I've been supporting Australia. Robbed. Robbed. They were robbed. <laughs> well, it's only taken five generations, and finally the Australians know how it feels to get robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, let's have a look and see if the World Cup is one of the top five talking points. I imagine it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh. In with a bullet at number one. <laughs> yes, England are still in the World Cup. There's been a lot of competition between the wags or wives and girlfriends in a series of fantasies I've been having. <laughs> <laughs> right, Sean, Jermaine and Phil, what have the nation been talking about this week? My favourite story of the week is the man who just chose to uh, sort out a problem with a digger. It's always the first way, isn't it? Yeah. He owed them some money. He used to have a, car they had a caravan site. 
and didn't pay their rent. And they sent him a letter, they said, well, you know, you owe us a £1,000, actually, in something. And he went, I'll show you a £1,000. And he came back with a digger. <laughs> and smashed their house up and all their cars. Do you want to have a look and see what the damage was? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, know, you see, to us, that is a photograph of terrible, terrible devastation. But to him, as a man that drives heavy plant, that's a bit like a CV or a calling card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, he's very calm. Everyone said he was driving, he's very calm. Well, I like the idea that when the police got him out, he was going, It's all right, I've got the hang of it now. <laughs> <laughs> didn't do it first, but it's easy. That's left. But, but didn't, didn't, didn't he rent it as well? Didn't he rent yeah. the... Uh, yeah. the th he, so he, hired, he spent 450 quid hiring it. And they should have known when they're looking at the form, they're going, Hang on, he's ticked the box for revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the bloke said to him, oh, pay me when you come back. You've seen that on the news, he's not all for fucks. Probably <laughs> nobody was suspicious when they saw a builder at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> the clues were there. <laughs> right, let's have a look and see whether the JCB man is one of the top five most talked about things. Yes. Yes, this is the story of a man who owed a landlady a thousand pounds and destroyed her house with a JCB rather than pay the debt. He was taken to the police station for questioning, the main question being, are you mental? <laughs> Dave's team, what else have the nation been talking Ooh. about? Prince Charles' uh, tax bill. The son, God bless him, said, Prince Charles earned £270,000 a week. That's twice as much as David Beckham. <laughs> that, well, those two people are not comparable, are they? You know, my mum's a nurse, she earns 15 grand a year. Twice as much as your average clown. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit puzzled that Camilla only cost the taxpayer 2,000 quid. I wouldn't pay more for her. <laughs> it's a lot of hay, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> If we do win the World Cup and she goes to meet all the footballers and she's shaking, you know, shaking Wayne Rooney's hand and it's just a picture of them in the paper saying, Donkey and Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> OK, this was not one of the big stories of the week, oh. but it was in the news. Sean Germain and Phil, what else have the nation been talking about? I think they've been talking about uh, the guy who gave away... He gave away $30 billion to Bill Gates, another, another very rich man. He gave it to the Bill Gates Foundation. Yes. Is the man's name Warren Buffett? Warren Buffet. That <laughs> is uh, where he made his money. He invented the buffet. In the <laughs> and he gets a percentage on every buffet that's ever held. Mm. <laughs> well, some would say it was, bought, it was invented by Laszlo Smorgasbrod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he never patented it. <laughs> I like the idea of, of, of what sort of thank you he expected. Cos you had someone that much money, you expect pretty big thank you, don't you? You expect someone to go, Oh! Oh, thank you! <laughs> well, I like that, Bill Gates went, Oh, cheers, I'll just leave it there. What? How long did it take him to put it in the head of one of them orphans at a service station? <laughs> <laughs> he used two pound coins. <laughs> not a real orphan, obviously. No, not a real orphan. <laughs> well, you know, who are they going to tell? <laughs> Well, that's your answer. Let's have a look and see whether it's up there. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, the world's second richest man, Warren Buffett, has given $31 billion to charity. Bill Gates said he would use the money wisely before setting out on his mission to the centre of the earth to discover a lost nation of cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean's team, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it the chocolates? Cadbury's have uh, called back a load of chocolate bars because they said they were, had salmonella in them. 250 million? Yeah, something like that, doesn't matter really. A huge number. Once you've gone over 10, I just lose. Do I get too excited? <laughs> <laughs> How about the chocolate? They also are saying something which is pretty balmy. They're saying, well, there's not a lot of salmonella in them, there's just no, a little just enough. bit. It's not going to spoil your meal. That's a dream diet, isn't it, for Posh Spice, that? You eat that chocolate, wait for 20 minutes for it to kick in, throw your guts up, wait another 20 minutes, and then all through the night, every 20 minutes, you throw up morning, one stone lighter. What a diet. <laughs> Apparently, the weekend, it really affected sales of uh, chocolate. Nobody put me buying a box of chocolates and presents as presents for ladies or anything like that, because it's all because the lady loves a month off work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it's there. Let's see. Let's see. Yes, Cadbury's have recalled more than one million chocolate bars because of a feared salmonella contamination. The cause of the salmonella outbreak was a leaking pipe, which is ironically also one of the symptoms. <laughs> OK, one more thing to get. Fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about? Wimbledon. Disappointment for British fans. Tim Edmonds out. 
I think actually Tim Henry going out of Wimbledon is the true meaning of sport relief. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God for that. Apparently he's going to come out. He's going to be a coach now, isn't he? Coach driver. I he's think going to be a coach. <laughs> You're not going to send your kids to that man as a coach, are you? I go oh, out there and underachieve. <laughs> <laughs> they're renaming the. They're saying that we're going to stop calling it Henman Hill, and we're going to change it to Murray Mound. That's what they said in the paper. I thought if they just changed it to Shit Heap, that could be all of them. <laughs> I thought we started the, the uh, idea that, that women should be prepared the same as men. Emily Pankhurst. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> <laughs> it was Venus Williams. Was it Venus Williams? Because Andy Murray's jumped, uh, he's, he's come the other way and said they shouldn't because they don't play five sets. Not only do they get paid less, they don't get a trophy, they just get a plate. <laughs> but it does fit in a dishwasher. <laughs> 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 well, I thought the real telly thing was, uh, did you see David, David Cameron on Jonathan Ross? And he's such a sort of publicity junkie now. And uh, they had Martina Navratil all over on. And Jonathan Ross cut to the green room where David Cameron said, what did you think about it? He goes, yes, I think we should definitely look into it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll sort that out. Any problems, I'll sort them out, like he's fucking Batman. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we have a look and see whether Wimbledon is one yeah. of the most talked about things this week? <laughs> yes, of course it is. Yes, Wimbledon started this week. Of course, it is nearly 30 years since a British lesbian won at Wimbledon. <laughs> right, well, at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Phil and Jermaine have three points, so Dave, Fiona and Jason have two points. <laughs> the next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Here's your first question. One in ten families have fallen out over what? The DNA results. <laughs> <laughs> is it one in ten families have fallen out over the front doorstep? <laughs> How many times have I told you about that? <laughs> He did the paedophile in the loft. <laughs> Stop feeding him! <laughs> we need the rent. <laughs> he comes down at night. He's all right. <laughs> Is it that, sir? No, it isn't that. Is it that, Mr Carr? I think it's the will. Correct. <laughs> yes, one in ten families has fallen out over a will. Sean, Phil and Jermaine, here's your next one. 7% of museum visitors have what? 7% of museum visitors have lost their virginity in the rib cage of a triceratops. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it's 7% of museum visitors have touched an exhibit. You're devilishly close with that. 7%... They don't oh. like it when you touch stuff in museums, do they? They hate it when you go and touch everything. Except that I was once in a museum in Florence, which is the archaeological museum. It's got this amazing male torso, great big muscly thing. And I thought that the guard wasn't there when I was there. And I hopped up on the plinth and had a rub up against it in my silk dress. <laughs> and then I realised that the guard was hiding behind another sculpture because lots of girls were doing that and he was getting off on it, yeah. hiding in... I know why he was hiding. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably... <laughs> what I like to do is I like to heckle the uh, guided tours. He's lying! Pharaohs, they're from Ireland! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, have a proper guess, then. 7% of museum visitors have what? I've wondered what it was like in the olden days. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly more than touching something. Smashed it. I'll give you that, yeah. Good one. Yes, 7% of museum visitors have knocked something over. Fair enough. Out of the way, Grandma, I've got some art to see. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's four points for Sean's team and five points for Dave's team. <laughs> the next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, Fiona and Jason are to go first. Ooh. To illustrate their statistic, let's have a look at a clip of an animal psychic channelling the spirit of a dolphin. <laughs>
Welcome, dear friends. It is our great delight and pleasure to be able to share this time and this space with you. You, dear friends, within human form, we within dolphin form. Okay, here is your related <laughs> statistic. 52% of Brits would like to be reincarnated as a dolphin rather than any other animal. True or false? I don't know why anybody would want to come back as an animal. I just, you know, we're, we're human, uh, you know, we're the best animal in the world. As a human, I only want to come back as a human, cos I'm number one, or a unicorn. I'm not sure you get that. <laughs> <laughs> no, cos people love horses, don't they? They love horses. Imagine how much they'd love a flying horse. Imagine that. <laughs> and if they didn't love you, fly off. <laughs> It's a very good point, Jason. What, what would you guys want to come back as? I could probably come back as a daddy long legs, live for six hours, and some fucker pulls your wings off. <laughs> That'd be my luck. Or I'd come back as a dolphin in a, in, in a fish pool in Blackpool. Yeah. Somebody going, right, you, jump, or you won't get a fucking pilchard. <laughs> Dolphins have got the edge for me, I think. They are very sexually active, dolphins. They have group sex. They do all that. Didn't they? And the actual the, the penis is prehensile. They can pick stuff up and carry it. That's brilliant, that. That's like a bit of flower arranging. Look at that. <laughs> Jermaine, what would you come back as? Uh, I will come back as a host of recycled nutrients, fungus and bacteria, and that suits me fine. <laughs> you know, it's a comedy show, Jermaine. <laughs> 52% of Brits would like to be reincarnated as a dolphin rather than any other animal. True or false? But we're having false. a round now. False. false. So you're going for false? 2 1. False. OK. Well, I can tell you that the answer is false. Ah! Yes, it's actually 13% that would like to come back as a dolphin. Of course, lots of people don't believe in reincarnation, but I think you may as well. You only live once. <laughs> right, OK. Sean, Phil and Jermaine, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. 720. dollars $720. All our bids are locked in. Good luck to you all. Our prize, 799 Merry Ring. <laughs> Jermaine when she found out she was coming on this show. <laughs> that was the Australian Price is Right. Here is your related statistic. 67% of game show contestants describe appearing on television as the most exciting thing that has ever happened to them. True or false? She looked horrified. She looked like she'd been given, uh, you know, tickets for a dinner with Mick Hucknall or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's called hysterics, isn't it? it yeah. They should have given slugged her. Bam! Yeah. What, what, what kind of a feminist are you? <laughs> I would slug you if you had hysterics. Will you? Do I have to have hysterics? <laughs> <laughs> How about if I'm just cheeky? <laughs> Female eunuch, this. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be here. <laughs> about game shows, they always say to contestants, don't they? Don't they? they always say to some, uh, fun, you know, there's a funny thing happened to you once, didn't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With biscuits or something. <laughs> yeah. And there you go, oh, yes, yeah, I bought, uh, bought some uh, rich tea and uh, I got them home and it turned out, I forgot you've got it wrong, actually, but we, we like digestives. <laughs> <laughs> those are the usual stories they tell. So you can see that the, the, actually the anecdotes they have in their life are so pitiful that television probably would blow their minds. <laughs> Jermaine, you were on one, though, weren't you? You yeah. were on Big Brother. You, was it the most exciting thing that's ever happened to you? No. What was? Almost anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I loathed it. And they make up rules that you consider yourself bound by, and then they change them. And they make it as hard as they can. This was Big Brother, wasn't it? Not your days in Guantanamo. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Sean? Um, I think it's uh, absolutely spot on, Jimmy. That <laughs> statistic isn't a statistic, it's a fact. <laughs> well, I'm I can staring tell you... down the barrel of the truth there. <laughs> and I'm saying yes. <laughs> I can tell you that the answer is false. <laughs> Thank you.
In fact, only 16% of game show contestants oh. describe appearing on television <laughs> as the worst thing <laughs> that has ever happened to them. I... Those Why? <laughs> So, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's four points for Sean's team and six points for Dave's team. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and surveys. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. The world's worst taste. <laughs> crow omelette. <laughs> <laughs> Get it, crow. All of that. Eggs. <laughs> Is it the medicine that your vet prescribed for your horse because he's at stud and he can't get an erection? <laughs> <laughs> Is it when uh, you're buttering toast and you get a bit of margarine on your hand and you go, I'll just eat that? Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> ah, horrible. <laughs> when you're in a plane and you crash and uh, you're a rugby team in the Andes and uh, you've got to eat each other, like, when you're eating, do you go, mm -hmm. <laughs> Dave tastes great! <laughs> That's good, Dave! <laughs> well, it'd be Jose, wouldn't it, because they're Argentinian? Well, no, there's one called Dave. Is there? Yeah. An Argentinian called Dave? Yep. Yeah, you know the one, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it was Dave Lopez. <laughs> I'll give you a clue, it's a vegetable. Oh, a banana. Brussels sprout. <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer, Jermaine. Oh. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Worst thing about gyms. And a gym is. <laughs> what I hate about gyms? <laughs> Everything's so bloody heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you think in this day and age you have to make them so bloody heavy? <laughs> Worst thing about gyms, personal you trainers. You don't like personal trainers? No, I don't. One of them said to me, You've got really skinny wrists. If you don't put muscle on there, you might fall over when you're old and break them. So he is an exercise. I right think you're fine. <laughs> Are you sure he was a gym instructor? <laughs> <laughs> is this a school? Do you want to report it to someone? <laughs> the worst thing about gyms. People laughing at your arms. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm going to give you that. Uh -huh. Here Yes, the worst thing about gyms is feeling inadequate. My gym have a special offer on at the moment. It's £50 a month, or 40 if you promise to never, ever go. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are... Sean, Phil and Jermaine have six points. Dave, Fiona and Jason are the winners with seven points. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>